Going to get it out wide. Kurzawa sends it up the sideline. Marcel Tisserand, the captain of the Congo team. See him out there at right back to start out the match. Over the top. Of course, France, the most championships of any team in the competition. Of course, they are the hosts. 11-11 over the years. 23 finals appearances. 12 runner-up finishes. Last time they won this competition, that was way back in 2007, and they're looking to put in Turkey. Uh, are coming with an under-20 side. That's not the case for France. They're looking to win this competition and put an end to that losing streak, or rather that non-championship streak again. Last winning it in 2007. That was the fourth of four in a row, and they've not won it since. Their last time in the final was 2011, where they lost to Colombia in the same group with them again this year. Here's Willy Sanyo, the coach of the under-21 French team. And quite a player as well. Willy Sanyo, the former France international and Bayern Munich fullback. Part of that World Cup runner-up side in the 2006 Germany World Cup. Veteran of two World Cups, two European championships. Won five Bundesliga titles with Bayern Munich. Did lift the Champions League trophy the previous time that Bayern won it to this 2013 edition back in 2001. Out to the right hand side now. Pio drops it back. And they're walking along the back line once again over to Lindsay Rose. dropping their second in a row in today's earlier action. Then again, some will say that the USA was not, not supposed to beat France or Colombia in the first place. Those are two toughest games right off the bat, but the one match against this France team, especially in the second half, have really stood out as an absolute golf in class between the two sides, the older, more experienced players of the French national team. Players with experience in the Ligue 1, playing in the top flight of French soccer against... Really a younger, less experienced side in the U.S. Todd Ramos bringing in, in fact, some collegiate players taking part as well. But this French side, they're expected to win it. They're going to get their first tough test of this competition today against Congo. A very physical, athletic, and fast side that can keep up with their athleticism. Like Sester there. Losing the ball. This is going to go all the way to the other side of the field for Diallo. Rose. Send it back into the midfield. Fari. Making his way up the sideline. Kurzawa. Kurzawa sends it up the pitch. Is all now. And defended by Walongwa. This one drops back into the midfield. Sprayed right by Fari. Trying to get into the box, and that one swept in for the first goal as Benjamin Janel gets on the board for France. Well, that is lackluster defending from Walonga. The number four for Congo just standing around, watching as this dangerous ball comes into the heart of the area. Take another look. It's a good switch onto the right side. Played in first time for Janel. You know, with nine or ten goals in the league two this season, he gets one here for France to open the scoring six minutes in. Had a surprise goal for Le Bleu. Comes off the top of his calf, it looks like, but that is just dreadful defending for Congo, who appeared to lose track of Geno. Came in completely unmarked. One team on that for the Congo. 
France now way out in front of everybody with five goals scored in the tournament. As Congo will try to answer here. Going over the rules once again. Again, if you're joining us for the first time in this competition, two halves, 40 minutes each, four substitutions for each side. Ten teams from five different confederations, five in each group. We'll play a round robin in the first part of the competition. Very simply, the winner of each group will go to the final, and the loser of that final will play a third-place matchup. That's going to be out of play. Kurzawa ushering it out. Here's a look at the goal again. And that's going to be just a bit too far and out of play. Democratic Republic of Congo, led by Sebastian Mignet, known as the Small Leopards. Of course, the other team for the Congo senior national team is controlled by the Congo Democratic Republic Football Federation. At the 2013 African Under-20 Championship in Algeria, Congo were eliminated in the group stage. This, at least half, at least half the players on that team are on this team as well. Congo failed to win a match in that group. Their best result coming in a 0-0 draw against Gabon. Congo has never qualified for the Under-20 World Cup. It's going to be a throw-in along the far sideline now. And again, this French side heavily favored to win this competition because of the fact that they all play domestically in either the French top flight or in the second division, as is the case with uh, all of the players on the field today for France. A number of them get regular playing time in the professional league. Yeah, and attack three of the attacking midfielders for Willy Sanyo's side have scored at least one goal in the league on this season. Balkan, Isirik, and Gazal. Benjamin Genot dropped 10 goals in the French second division. 33. Kick here. No one at the near post to meet it, though it did look like he was going to test Abdoulaye Diallo. Diallo stepping in for the goalkeeper from game one, Zachary Boucher, who did not play poorly. Willy Sanyo making wholesale changes to his starting 11 for this second game. Keeping players fresh. They play every two days, every three days, rather. That does factor in toward the late stages of the competition. The teams with the fresher legs tend to get the better results when it matters most. See Bope trying to stay on the ball here. Loved off. So, foul goes against France. Congo will restart. Malumba sprays it back. Forward for Janelle, who has to play the safe ball. France keeping possession here. Looked to be a hard foul there, and finally, the referee halts play. This is going to be a yellow card. Yeah, no question about it. That's a dangerous challenge for him. Aristotle in Siala. Siala diving in, studs out, two-footed challenge. Does appear to get some of the ball, but it's a reckless tackle. The first booking. There it is again. Completely misses the ball. Takes the player out with two feet. This Congo team may have some familiarity with the players from France. Almost half the team does play in France. Ten of the players, in fact. Just five members of the Congo team play in the Congo local league. 
Four of those play for AS Vita Club, the Black Dolphins. Only one that doesn't. Irvin Donga. That's right now. Plays for Mazembe. Is that just going to be put out of play on the far side? Trying to get Insekulu involved. But they haven't been able to get it to their forward just yet. Tries to body his way onto the ball, but no luck. France now. Moving to the left side of the formation. This is where they've started most of their attacks thus far. It's going to go against Kurzawa. It'll be a throw in for Congo. Those matches will also be held here at the Stade de Costier. France manager Willy Sanyo with some last minute words for Kurzawa. It's arguably, in the be arguably been the best player or at least the most involved player for France in the opening half. The fullback getting some Valuable advice from the former fullback of Bayern Munich and the French national team. One substitution coming, at least one for Congo. And that is Hernan Cabasele preparing to come onto the pitch. Could be coming on for Nzuzi, who is not quite that involved in the first half. The one player it will not be for is Manzala. Manzala has been very active for Congo. One of the few bright spots for the Congolese side in the opening half, but... They've lacked creativity, imagination, build-up play, connective passing on attack. Defended well, except for that big lapse in the sixth minute, allowing Benjamin Genoa to receive the ball in at the edge of the six with no one around him. It wasn't even the best of shots. Tinsiala was coming off, number 18. Didn't see much of him in the first half either, but he did pick up a yellow card, so that might be one of the reasons that he's coming off. As Sebastian Minier will try to keep 11 players out on the pitch. His side just starting to get into the swing of things as the first half concluded. Had two chances. Diallo, the keeper for France, looked a little bit shaky, but you could attribute that to him standing around for the first 35 minutes. Well, he didn't have a lot of work to do, did he? Well, this man has been a bit of a threat. Valentin Zurich. Gino Fuentes alongside Andres Cordero 2013 too long tournament remember each of the sides does have four substitutions to play with so we could see a number of them Shift is on. swing and a miss it looked like Janelle may have kicked somebody in the back didn't catch the number and the new man on the pitch Cabasele taking a shot, and that's the real, the first real threat for Congo. So perhaps a, a wise substitution here from Sebastian Minier. Oh, it's wonderfully won by Cabasele, the man who has just come on, trying to make an immediate impact, went one-on-one -on -one against Kurzawa. He won the foot race, and he got off a powerful shot to the near post, trying to surprise Diallo, but it's well covered by the goalkeeper. You're right, the first real danger chance for Congo. Got a good strike on that one, did Manzala. Or rather, Cabasele. Here's that cross again. Diallo elevating, bringing it down. That chance could bring this club to life. This Congolese side, no creativity whatsoever in that first half. Just no imagination, but they didn't need much there. Just a foot race won by Cabasele. It was being closed down, got off a very strong shot against Diallo. Kurzawa gambled and lost the gamble. He was chasing Cabasele the rest of the way. I believe it was Peel that got beat. Kurzawa actually came all the way across the pitch and almost got there before his two center backs did. That one out of play. Sester picks it up. 
France now trying to secure the possession. Looks like Congo's going to be a little bit more aggressive. You can see Cabasele pushing up high. Kurzawa oh. definitely the most aggressive player on the French side. Yeah, it's going to be the first yellow card against France in this game. Cruzal with that trailing leg, committing the foul. Oh, very hard challenge against Nsikulu. Nsikulu, the back of his head. Oh, I thought it may have hit just his upper back. Still. And Kurzawa does go into the book. You're right, it was Puel who got beat on that near side on the chance for Cabasele. Kurzawa apparently hadn't put a foot wrong up until that sliding tackle. Very reckless. Just got a little bit too aggressive that time. It served him well in the first half, but that time it resulted in a yellow card. Kurzawa brings it down. One of the things we noticed is that because France has gone to Kurzawa to bring attacks off the left-hand side as much as they have. We haven't seen much of Baogun. Peel has been more of the defensive type right back, although he did have the assist on the goal. Lumba trying to close down, and he forces the ball out of play, so that'll go back over to France. And Zala Good player in the first half, but this time lets the ball get away from him. It's called out of play. Justin down. Switch to the other end of the pitch. Falcon goes to get a touch on the ball. Puel. Now that one goes out of play. Back into the midfield, Bope tries to slide it over to Mfulu. Forward, Baokin trying to get involved here. He gets bodied off the ball. Well, the other number 19, Mbella, Mbemba, excuse me. One thing that Congo do have in their favor, they are big, they are athletic. They've been trying to make use of that speed in the first part of this contest, but it's been France's technical ability that's been the deciding factor thus far. It's a bit selfish at times as well. They don't really look for the best passing option. They're not helping each other out. Oh, that is a hard tackle. The captain, Tisserant, perhaps looking out for his teammates. Very late. Fullback against fullback collision there. Here obstruction. Didn't look like much of an effort from Tissern to get out of the way on that one. Got up. No complaints to the officials. Sent low. All the way back to Kurzawa. Kurzawa sends it forward, but just a bit too hasty. Playing the ball forward. No foul called. France still in possession for Reed. Over to Poole. Isarik. Has it taken away once again? Cavaselli jumps in front of him and gets it forward. And Sukulu has to chase this one down. He won't get there. This will be played over to Diallo, and he'll clear it up the field. Again, there's that individualism, that desperation. Instead of stepping on the ball, looking for a vertical or a lateral option, instead it's just too reliant on that speed. You know what? The side you're playing against is also very fast, very athletic, and also very technically gifted. You're not going to beat him with just straight line speed. And if that's what you're relying on, you're going to get very few chances. In fact, you've had only one. 
from Cabocelli early in this half. It's a team sport. You need your teammates around you. Far too individualistic. That's not enough to beat this French defense. Oh, just overran that one for Eat. He was going to try and set up a shot. And instead turns it over. Sester gets it into the middle. Manzala sending the ball forward. Once again looking for Cabasele. Unable to get it to him, though. Cabasele made four starts, 18 appearances for Avion 2. Lower divisions of French football. Again, half of the team for Congo does play professionally in France at some level. Lots of scouts in the stands for this Toulon tournament. Teams from all over Europe getting a look at some of the top young talents. The under 21 and under 20 level. We haven't had much to look at in terms of Congo in this match, except for maybe Manzala, the number 10. He's looked worthy of that number in the first half. Hasn't been quite as involved. من البرتغال كرة لمصلحة المنتخب الكونغولي والخطأ موجود والمخالفة للمنتخب الكونغولي المباراة تجري على استاد كوستيير بمدينة نيم نيم كانت مدرسة نيم قدمت الكثير نيم وصلت لنهائي كأس الكأس فرنسا أكثر من مرة نيم كان عنها لاعب كبير في الستينات اللي هو شارل الفريد الأسمراني اللي هو يلعب في منطقة دفاع وسط دفاعي إلى جانب قادر فيرود الذي درب فريق نيم درب كذلك لا ننسى فرق عديدة في أوروبا ودرب حتى المنتخب الجزائري وكان اسم كبير ظل في فرنسا أكثر من خمسين سنة هذا الفلود رحمه الله الذي توفي بطبيعة الحال كرة لمصلحة المنتخب والفرنسي والعرقلة موجودة العرقلة موجودة ومرت لحد الآن عشرين دقيقة عن الشوط الثاني تبقى عشرين دقيقة وينتهي هذا اللقاء كرة من جديد على انطلاقة وفي النهاية الكرة مباشرة للحارس مونتوندا كرة طويلة كرة فرنسية تمرير والتمرير انطلاقة لكن الدفاع موجود إبعاد الكرة والخطأ لمن لي المنتخب الفرنسي يقول الحكم أو المنتخب الكونغولي عفوا عودة للوراء مباشرة للحارس الكرة الطويلة التسلل يشير الحكم إلى التسلل الحكم المكسيكي في هذه البطولة عودة من التسلل إذا شاهدها مساعد الحكم وكرة طويلة للمنتخب الكونغولي مباشرة 
الحارس الحارس اذا عبد الله ديالو عبد الله ديالو بينما زكريا بوشام موجود في دكه الاحتياط صراع كبير وفي النهاية يحصل عليها الدفاع فريق الكونغو والانطلاق ما فيش خطأ فعلا الاحتفاظ بالكرة والعودة للوراء عنصر الشباب المعول عليه بعد سنوات قليلة يعني سنتين ثلاثة يصبح تصبح التجربة كبيرة و يصبح الاندماج بدل اشرب المحاوله لكن سهله بالنسبه للحارس التعلم اكثر التجربه اكثر والانطلاقه مثل ما فعل اي فعلت الاسماء سابقا من انا شرار وكريستيانو رونالدو وزين الدين زيدان وفابيان بارتيز واسماء كثيره مرت على هذه الدوره دوره تولون خطا والمخالفه للمنتخب الفرنسي الخطا موجود من اللاعب رقم 21 اللي هو اومينيكيم فولو اذا يدخل اللاعب رقم 17 اللي هو ميرفي بوبي او في المنتخب الفرنسي ستيفان ستيفان بواكان يدخل ستيفان باو كان يدخل لاعب نيس ستيفان باو كان اذا يخرج ويدخل مكانه لاعب كيفن ماي اذا التماس في التنفيذ بالنسبة للمنتخب الفرنسي غريغوار بويل ثم العودة للوراء انطلاقا اللعب مفتوح من جانب المنتخب الفرنسي شوف المساحات الموجودة بين لاعب وآخر وينطلق ينطلق اللعب رقم سبعة بول جورج وفي النهاية ضاعت الكرة وتصبح الهجمة للمنتخب الكونغولي المنتخب الكونغولي والتمريرة الرائعة من هناك على جيليونا على انطلاق على طريق اللعب رقم 12 اللي هو اللاعب رقم 12 كرته بعيدة اللاعب كلارك نزيكونو كلارك نزيكونو ضاعت منه هذه الكرة بينما كان ينتظرها صاحب القامة اللاعب رقم 9 هو سانيول ويلي سانيول 187 مباراة مع بايرن ميونخ كظهير أيمن ويلي سانيول فاز ببطولات عديدة شارك في كأس العالم شارك في بطولتين أوروب... لأوروبا 2004-2008 شارك في بطولة العالم للشباب يعني نقدر نقول أنه مر بكل الفئات كذلك والآن أصبح مدربا للشباب كرة طويلة جمهور قليل جدا يحضر هذه الدورة ومباشرة الحارس ممتاز خروج بالكرة عن طريق الكرة القصيرة ممتاز الفريق الكونغولي صراحة صراحة مش سيء بالعكس عنده إمكانات لعب بالند للند ربما تنقصه التجربة ولكن يبقى فريق متكامل فريق متكامل وعنده إرادة كذلك الإرادة موجودة التماس اذا للمنتخب الكونغولي يتدخل الدفاع الفرنسي وتعود الكرة من جديد للمنتخب الكونغولي والتبادل من هناك شوف التغيير والكرة لم تصل مقطوعة مقطوعة عن طريق اللاعب رقم 15 اللي هو اللاعب لحد الان شاهدناه تحرك كثيرا يعني صراحة قدم مردود طيب لوي كلوندري تعود الكرة من جديد لكن هذه الكرة قصيرة قصيرة هذه الكرة
و13 دقيقة تفصلنا على نهاية الشوط الثاني والمباراة إذا الصراع متواصل وهذا اللاعب نزيكولو عنده إمكانات رائعة كلارك نزيكولو لاعب رقم 12 في المنتخب الكونغولي صراع ويبقى صراع وهكذا المحاولة جميلة الانطلاقة الانطلاقة خطيرة خطيرة تمريرة جميلة وحذاري من التعادل والتسديدة لكن الكرة لم تشكل خطورة على عبد الله ديالو لكن التبادل الكروي كان جميل شوف 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 اللاعب كان يطلب في الكرة اللاعب كان في وضعية جيدة كان يطلب في الكرة لكن فضل اللاعب أن يسدد والكرة لم تدخل الشباك بنجما تمريرة جميلة كرة كانت جميلة لكن قصيرة وفي النهاية يبعد الدفاع يبعد الدفاع وتعود عن طريق اللاعب رقم أربعة لوريمي مولومبا ثم كورزاوا كورزاوا من Good reaction by Diallo to keep it out. It high praise by uh, Willie Samuel speaking about Mendy after game one. In fact, both of his central midfielders, Mendy and Imbula, saying Mendy is a bit like Claude Makélélé, former French international, midfield destroyer, Real Madrid player. Then Imbula resembles Abu Diaby, more of a creative force in midfield. And they complement each other very well because of that. You had a defensive midfielder, a destroyer, a creative midfielder, a playmaker, right in the heart of the air of the pitch for France, and really played wonderfully well for France in the opener against the United States. Not getting a chance to start in game two against Congo, but Mendy could still make his impact as he comes on for free. The final seven minutes of game two. Manzia perhaps just a bit too charged up when he came into the match. Picks up a yellow card in the first two minutes of his being on the pitch. Curzo with a bad touch there. He slowed down a little bit here in the second half. Pretty much ever since he got that card at the beginning of the half. Still made runs forward, but we haven't seen him in constant possession like he was earlier. Now, one of the things we've noticed with uh, his substitutions thus far, Willie Sanyol, 